that Zach Rye in particular describes what seems to be a nuclear exchange in such vivid detail, it's downright scary. He speaks of these flying cylindrical containers that deliver these wicked fire offerings composed of extremely heavy metal which fly across the face of the whole earth and consume houses and buildings, even the stones thereof. And uh, they, they even leave this residue behind after the destruction. Zachariah even gives the exact dimensions of the delivery vehicles, the size of the containers that hold the wicked fire offerings, and he even details exactly how the heavy metal mechanism of this evil fire offering is detonated. Now, if you read Zechariah chapter 5 using a modern English paraphrase Bible, without checking the Hebrew, you're going to be very confused. You are going to be reading about this woman that is so evil that she's crammed into a wicker basket, and nothing is really going to make sense. But we're not going to do that here. We're just going to read exactly what Zechariah says in the Hebrew language, we're not going to creatively spiritualize it away until it doesn't make any sense. So let's uh, review some some of our Hebrew first, and then we'll read what Zechariah wrote back in like 520 B.C. The first thing that Zechariah sees in this vision is this giant flying roll. Now what is a roll? Some Bibles say scroll, but the word here is Megillah. Not a scroll like we commonly think that rolls up into the two cylinders. Uh, Torah is written on a scroll rolled up into the two cylinders. Now, a Megillah rolls up into a single cylinder. For example, the book of Esther is on a Megillah and rolls up into a single roll. You can see here a Megillah is pretty much a, a cylinder and typically has this uh, common two-to-one height to circumference ratio. Zechariah gives the size of this Megillah that he sees flying through the air. He says that it's 20 cubits high and 10 cubits in breadth. Now the word breadth here is not diameter. Diameter is a Greek measurement. The breadth Zachariah is talking about here is what they call a line cast about. We would call it circumference. Like uh, back in, I think it's uh, First Kings maybe, King Solomon was building his house with these giant pillars, 30 cubits in breadth. This was the line cast about, not diameter. They weren't 30 cubits in diameter. Uh, to find the diameter of a cylinder, if you want to know how big this flying Megillah was, Zachariah describes, you have to take the breadth and divide it by pi. The Megillah Zachariah saw here was uh, 20 cubits high and 10 cubits in breadth, or line cast about. That comes out to be approximately 5.5 feet in diameter when you, when you do the math. Okay, now that we know what a Megillah looks like, let's move on. Zechariah is going to go on to describe a woman, or an Isha, that's the Hebrew for, for woman, that sits in the midst of an ephah, or in some versions they say a basket. Let's look closely at these two words and see exactly what an Isha is and exactly what an ephah is. In the Hebrew... The word Isha can mean two, two different things. It can either mean a woman, which is what most tra translations put it into the English, or the exact same word Isha can mean fire offering. It's the exact same word. And you can only tell by the context which one is, is being used here. And Apha, in some versions they call it a basket, a woman in a basket, or an Isha in, in, in a basket. But the... The word basket is actually apha. It's more precisely a receptacle for holding a quantity of 40 liters. It's a container, sometimes made of clay. Sometimes it can be a basket, it, but it has a capacity to hold about 40 liters, kind of like a bushel basket kind of deal, a dry unit of measurement. The NIV and, and most other uh, modern versions just say basket. But remember, the word here is apha. When we read through this Zechariah chapter 5, we have to remember that when the Bible translators were putting this passage in English 400 years ago, the idea of a fire offering encased in lead that sat in the midst of an ephah seemed kind of weird to them. So they opted instead for a woman in a basket with a lead lid on it instead. We're going to actually see how since 1945 that this Hebrew word isha really being a firing 
a uh, fire offering like it means will make a lot more sense than stuffing some woman into a basket that's flying around and putting a lead lid on it because she's so evil. Now that we have checked some of our Hebrew and beings that we now live in the nuclear age, we might be the first generation to actually understand this prophecy. So let's read Zechariah chapter 5 using the original Hebrew words to keep us on track here. The prophet Zechariah in particular describes what seems to be a nuclear exchange in such vivid detail. All right now, Shalom. This is your brother, Yuanathan, first and foremost. I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Um... Today, we're going to talk about, you know, the World War Three, the nuclear missiles really briefly. And I'm going to run a clip for you guys in the beginning of the lesson. All right. But um, let's go to Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, because prophecy is chief. Prophecy is what separates the scriptures from all the philosophies of the world. And in this time, the fullness of the Bible is being brought out. And it was prophesied that the fullness of the Bible would be brought out when you go to uh, Daniel, the 12th chapter in the fourth verse. It was a it was a big gap in time to where the prophecies, the understanding of who the actual people were, the things that were supposed to play out. The truth of the Holy Bible was hidden and the Lord did it that way on purpose, because, again, remember, he's the director of this movie. All right. So Daniel 12 and four, it says, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. In the Holy Bible, seal the book, shut up the words, take away the understanding. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Let's go read that in the, uh, the NLT briefly. <clears throat> Let's go read that in the NLT briefly. All right. Daniel 12 and verse 4. Okay, it reads. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end, when many will rush here and there, and knowledge shall be increased. And in this time, knowledge is being increased. Okay, but let's go to Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, and the 21st verse. Okay, it reads, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And people, they think things are going to continue as they are, that the way they live life, life within this infrastructure is just going to always be. But no, those who are in, a, in authority at this time, the wicked, right? Job 9 and 24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, meaning the Lord gave the earth over for this time period into the hand of the wicked. Because going all the way back to Jacob and Esau, they both received blessings. Now, the difference was this. Jacob's blessing that he received from Isaac was the eternal blessing. When our kingdom is established, it would be forever. And that's going to be upon the earth. That's what's to come. That's what we're waiting on. That's what we're advocating for. Those who are ruling now are descendants of Esau, Edom, okay? The people that are calling themselves uh, Jewish today. That was prophesied that there would be an, uh, uh, a perpetrator in the Holy Land calling themselves the Jews as well. You go to Revelation. It was prophesied that there would be a people masquerading as the Lord's people before he returned. Let's go get that just to back it up. I don't want to just be dry talking out here, right? So let's get that really quick. It's uh, Revelation 2 and 9. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. He's talking to the people that are under the curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. That Those are the real Israelites. We're the ones going through tribulation and poverty. But it goes on to say, but thou art rich. Why? Because we were promised the kingdom, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. These people that are living in the Holy Land today, they don't push the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And that's the names of the Father and the Son, the true names.
All right. So Revelation 2 and 9 again. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And that's being revealed here in this time. The simple fact that you had these, these low-level celebrities call out and say, oh, you guys uh, own everything. The people, the whole world, all of the media jumped into outrage. Think about that. Hmm. So now let's go back. Let's, let's actually finish it out. Second Ezra 16, 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth. And evils are growing upon the earth right now, man. World War III is brewing. It's, 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 it's in the it's in this beginning stages over there in Ukraine and Russia. But everybody is concerned with, with foolishness. They're concerned with whatever the media is putting on, which are things that, that are not going to affect their day-to-day. -day. A digital currency is being uh, manufactured so that you won't be able to you know, just buy the things that you want to where what you spend your money on, what you have access to is going to be controlled by those, by, by your overlords. But that's not being addressed. You understand? There are bigger things at play that are, is going to affect everybody of every class to where you're not going to be able to buy or sell within this society unless you bend the knee to those who are the wicked, those who are evil. You understand? All right. So uh, verse uh, 13, it says for strong. Let's jump back to. Yeah, I'm jumping back down to verse 13 because I want to read how this entire infrastructure is going to be dismantled via World War III. I want to read how, you know, the, you know, the climax of this kingdom is, is, is going to come to a halt. So 2 Ezra 13, 16 and 13, right? It says, For strong is the right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp. And the Lord's going to put the spirit on these nations to shoot missiles upon each other. And you got to remember, when the prophets were writing these things down, they were using the words best accessible to them at the time. And in that clip, the guy even went into, you know, the, 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 the meaning of the different roles, talking about the silos and all those things. So you have an understanding. See, when you come to the Bible, you can't take it for face value. You got to look up the meaning of words. You got to go deeper, much deeper, you see. All right. For strong is the right hand that bendeth the bow. He's talking about the missiles here. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. When those ICBM missiles are launched, right, they lock on to a, la a latitude and longitude. When they begin to be shot in the ends of the world, you can't shoot a, a, a man can't shoot an arrow from one end of the earth to the end of, you know, to the other. But the missiles. All right. The missiles are going to be used in that fashion. Verse 14, behold, the plagues are sent. And shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. The arrow doesn't doesn't, uh, you know, uh, consume the foundation of the earth. Even in ancient times when they would light the arrows on fire, it wouldn't consume the foundations of the earth the way a missile does. Zechariah, when we go to the book of Zechariah, like you mentioned in the clip I ran before, it goes into, you know, that. I thought that was pretty neat. I thought it was a, a good treat for you guys uh, today. All right. So this is uh, 2 Ezra 16, 16. Like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward. So once the Lord has these missiles shot off from these different countries towards America, towards these different nations, that's it. It's, it's, there's no negating it. It's going to happen. These things are going to come to pass. Whether people believe it or not, we're just here to warn you. So whether people believe it or not, it means nothing to us. Our job is simply to warn you. That's our part in the movie. If you get it, you get it. You don't, you don't. There's a way to escape what's getting ready to come. But there's only one way to escape, and that's through our Lord. And to those who don't want to hearken unto his messengers, hey, man, that's on you. And it was written in your story not to hearken. The Lord put the spirit on you to not to get it and to not understand. Isn't that something? Verse 15, all right, the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumed the foundation of the earth. 
Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues shall be sent upon the earth, shall not return again. Okay, so once the destruction is set in motion, it's not going to end until the job is done, which is destruction of Babylon and its system, this infrastructure that's been set up because a new world order and righteousness is going to be set up. All right. Verse 17. All right. What was me? What was me? Who would deliver me in those days? And this is also in a, uh, in a, an allude to reincarnation. So when you come into the Bible and you actually go into how life and death works, all spirits return unto the Father, then they come back, they come back to the earth in a body within that same line of their father, and they live out their judgments upon the earth. This is the place where judgment takes place. All right, and I could back that up with precepts, but that'll spin us into a whole nother lesson. But uh if somebody needs a further elaboration on it, because I know a lot of new people are watching. Just say, hey, could you elaborate on what you said in, in this part of the video? I'll make a whole new video on it, even though we've done it a thousand times over. All right. Verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death. That's what's coming upon the earth before this kingdom is established. How do you how are you going to navigate this time? Because the scriptures we read Daniel 12 and 4. But when you read Daniel 12 and 1, it tells you that the time that is getting ready to come before the transition before we cross that threshold into the establishment of the kingdom, that it's going to be the worst time in history, documented or undocumented. Remember that transatlantic slave trade happened. Remember that 70 AD happened. Remember that many different genocides were, were attempted in, to take place. Remember very, many great wars, many great, you know, things happened to people where great death took place. And the Lord is telling you, he's telling us here in Daniel 12, that the time that's getting ready to come is going to be worse than any of those times by a long shot. You see? So day, uh, 2nd Ezra 16, 18 again, it says the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars. Okay. And the, the, the major war is going to be World War III. And you, we can go into great detail with, in that when you go to Joel, the third chapter. You're not going to get this in the church. You're not going to get this information. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Okay? So all through the Bible, it talks about World War III. It talks about great death. It talks about these different things getting ready to play out before the return of our Lord. And remember, okay, to the Lord, his crucifixion was like yesterday. The Lord perceives time much more differently than we perceive time. The scriptures say a thousand days with us is like a day to the Lord. So 2,000 years ago, he was crucified, right? So that was like, you know, that was like, the, you know, it's like a weekend break that he took. And now he's getting ready to come back. And he's going to have, he's going to have that righteous anger, man, with those same spirits that are back here on the earth that pierced him. Those same spirits that said, crucify him, crucify him. He's going to have a court with you. He's going to, two thirds of our people, the wicked, the nations. It's going down, man. Zephaniah 2 and 3 is how you escape it. Okay, um, Matthew uh, 24, and we'll start at verse 6. It says, And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and their families of Salakia. And there shall be famines, lack of food, and pestilences, diseases, We've we, we seen a prelude to that with the whole pandemic and earthquakes. And it, it, it's been record numbers of earthquakes within the past few years in diverse places. OK, Matthew uh, 24 and 8. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. So those who are standing stiffly for righteousness, the Lord's going to allow for some of us to be abducted by our enemies. But that's perfectly fine because, again, when you understand how life and death works, you know it's not an end-all, be-all. It's not final. And if a man dies standing stiffly for the things of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the scriptures say that the dead in Yahweh Shai are going to be raised up first. So that's your official. That, that's how you go out. Okay? Verse 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my namesakes. It's going to get to a point to where those who are standing for Yahweh Shai, that the whole world is going to hate us. 
Now, how do you mentally prepare for that? Well, you got to be reading. You got to be acting out the ways of the Lord. You got to get intimate with, the, with these lessons that the Lord is giving us so that when we are put in that situation, you've built up your faith enough to endure those things that you already know are going to come. And you simply understand it's just simply a part of the movie that has to play out. But most people... They're not able to go through adversity or affliction like that. That's why what the Lord says when you come to serve him, prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare your soul to be put through some tests because you have to be built up to endure and see your way through the whole thing to the end. You're right? The scriptures say he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, so this is Matthew 24 and 10. It says, and they shall uh, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And you, there's people that even know they're Israelites, but they're false prophets. They, they still push that peace doctrine. They push establishing something here on this side. They take away the name. All right. They tell you that this horrible time that's prophesied in the scriptures that we've been reading about isn't going to come. So the, the, the easy way to decipher who's telling the truth is are they using the word to back up everything that they say? Do they pull out the precepts? The scriptures say in Isaiah 8 and 20, it says, uh, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. And then if you go to 1 Peter 4 and 11, it also tells you what? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You have to use the words. You have to use the Lord's words when, when you dive into these biblical conversations. When you speak, you filter your actions and your words through the spirit, which is the word. Okay? So... Verse 12, it says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And, we, and people are much uh, less inclined to give a shit about the things that people are going through to give to, to care about our, the, the state that our nation is in. Because iniquity is lifted up. People are unconcerned with the things that actually matter. They're unconcerned with justice. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And all the world is coming across the fact that the people that were taken here on slips, ships, came to the Americas on ships. The so-called black, Latino, Native American people are actually the people, the bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The bloodline descendants of Jacob. They're the actual Israelites. And in the people that are calling themselves the Jews, like we read in Revelation 2 and 9, and are not, are being put under a microscope. They're being made naked. They're being revealed to be someone else. And who are they being revealed as? Esau, Edom, the wicked. So we're getting very close to this time that we're reading about. Very close to it. So... Just a quick lesson for you guys, man. Lord willing, it was edifying. Also, uh, actually, let me jump and read Isaiah 9 and 5 really quick. Just, just to uh, jump back to the topic of the missiles. Because, you know, this, this great war, this time that we're getting ready to step into is prophesied, man. It says, for every battle of the, is Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. So every war, every battle up until this point has been fought in a particular fashion. What? Confused noise, guns going off, men screaming, all these different things, right? And garments rolled in blood, dead bodies, men losing limbs, all these things, right? But it has a differentiation, a differentiation here. It says, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire because it's going to be fought with thermonuclear missiles. And then verse 6 says, for, uh, for unto us a child is born, Yahweh Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Right. So the kingdom of heaven, you know, is Shahab Shah, then King David, then 144,000. The governing body are going to be the men that were standing stiffly for uh, the things of Yahweh Shem Yahweh and acting, acting them out in their doings, prophesying. So, you know, Lord willing, I'm a part of that number. But the, the men of the Lord, they are you're looking at the, the, the new world rulers. All right. And the government is verse six again from the top. I'll actually start from the top here. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and unto the, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay? So that's what we're waiting on, man. 
But there's other things that have to come to pass first because this movie has a has a certain storyline that it has to go through. Let me go get Revelation 11 really quick. Because it talks about Revelation 11, the, the fall of Babylon the Great, which is America. And a lot of scholars even tell you that uh, so-called scholars, right? Because the, the fullness of the truth is only given to the descendants of Jacob. So we're the actual scholars. But, you know, by worldly standard, scholars will tell you that America also, they'll tell you the same thing, that America is Babylon the Great, that future kingdom prophesied in the Bible that will be ruling, that will be the court, the, the entity that, the, that the, the, the world power uses to push its vibration upon the earth. Okay. So it says, uh, Revelation eleven 14, I'll get straight to the point, man. It says, the second woe is past, meaning that well, woe is a great destruction. The second world war is past, right? And behold, the third will come quickly. And, and in this chapter, it's going into the fashion in which America is going to be destroyed, the completion of its destruction, Talk going into, you know, uh, the two prophets, the northern and southern kingdom, uh, tormenting the people with the truth, which is what you, you're witness we're witnessing that now. So, um, yeah. Uh, Lord willing, again, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah Kadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone. And I want to say shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right? May the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.